This video will explain how empagliflozin treats neutropenia in glycogen storage disease type 1b, also known as GSD1b. But first, let's review the basics. GSD1b is a genetic disorder. Genetic disorders are caused by an abnormality in the DNA. Our DNA is like a recipe book. It contains the instructions to make everything that is in our bodies. People with GSD1B have an error in their genetic instructions in the part that tells the body how to make an enzyme known as the glucose 6-phosphate transporter, or in short, G6P transporter. This has two major consequences. First, it means that the liver is unable to release glycogen. If untreated, this results in chronic and persistent hypoglycemia, or low blood sugar. Second, it results in neutropenia, an abnormally low number of neutrophils in the blood. Neutrophils are a type of white blood cell that protect the body from infections. They are the body's first line of defense against infectious organisms that enter the body. Neutropenia can create many problems in people with GSD1B, including gum disease, serious infections, and inflammatory bowel disease. But why does a problem with the glucose 6-phosphate transporter cause neutropenia? Let's take a look. This is a neutrophil. This is the G6P transporter, and this is a molecule circulating in the blood called 1,5-AG. 1,5-AG is a type of sugar. It enters into neutrophils and gets turned into another molecule called 1,5-AG6P. Normally, 1,5-AG6P exits neutrophils through the G6P transporter, but in people with GSD1B, the G6P transporter doesn't work. This means that 1,5-A G6P builds up and gets stuck inside their neutrophils. This is a big problem for neutrophils because 1,5-A G6P ends up blocking another very important enzyme called hexokinase. Hexokinases are required for neutrophils to be able to use glucose. When neutrophils can't use glucose, two major things happen. First, they don't have any energy to fuel themselves. This ultimately results in neutrophil death because energy is required to keep our cells alive. Second, they are unable to properly communicate with other cells. This means that they don't do a very good job when they do respond to infections. For the last 30 years or so, neutropenia in GSD1B has been treated using GCSF, or as many people know it, neupogen or filgrastum. GCSF works by speeding up the rate at which neutrophils are produced, leading to an increased number of neutrophils in circulation. Though it has been effective in allowing some people with GSD1B to have at least some neutrophils circulating in their systems, it doesn't correct the underlying problem. This is because GCSF improves neutrophil function by increasing the number of what are ultimately poorly working neutrophils. As a result, though improved, recurrent infections are typically still a problem. Also, Long-term GCSF use can have some pretty negative side effects. It causes an enlarged spleen which is at risk of rupturing, and it appears to be associated with a higher risk of developing leukemia. This is where empagliflozin comes in. Remember 1,5-AG, that molecule circulating in the blood that gets into neutrophils and clogs them up? Empagliflozin causes 1,5-AG to be removed from the blood through the kidneys, excreting it in the urine. It was originally developed as a type 2 diabetes drug, but it also has a super cool application for GSD1B. When 1,5-AG is removed from the blood, it is unable to enter into neutrophils and clog them up. This means that the hexokinase is able to do its job and neutrophils are able to use glucose. When neutrophils are able to use glucose, they are able to fuel themselves and live longer. They are also better able to communicate with other cells, doing a better job at responding to infections. In other words, empagliflozin takes dysfunctional neutrophils in people with GSD1B and helps them to be functional. This has led to some pretty incredible results. Patients have seen major improvements in their inflammatory bowel disease, as well as fewer infections, better wound healing, and oral Importantly, health. Importantly, they have also been able to stop taking or significantly reduce their dose of GCSF. As a result, they have also seen reductions in their spleen size and improvements in anemia. Now, you might be concerned that empagliflozin is a type 2 diabetes drug, so won't it lower blood sugar? And isn't that a problem in GSD1B since chronic and persistent low blood sugar is the other major part of the condition? Great question. Studies have shown that empagliflozin only increases your risk of hypoglycemia if it's taken at the same time as insulin, metformin, or sulfonylurea, which are other diabetes drugs. And in a clinical trial recently published on the use of empagliflozin in GSD1B, no incidences of hypoglycemia due to empagliflozin were found. Here's why. 
Empegliflozin works in the kidneys, an organ that acts like a filter, removing wastes and extra fluid from the body by making urine. Imagine that inside the kidneys there are a bunch of doors. When glucose enters the kidneys, it normally enters back into the blood through door number two. Empegliflozin blocks door number two. When this happens, glucose goes back to the blood through door number four instead, the same door that 1,5-AG uses. Glucose is like a VIP guest in the body, and it gets bumped to the front of the line. This means 1,5-AG can't get through door number four, and instead gets excreted in the urine. In people with diabetes who have uncontrolled high blood sugar, there is so much glucose in the blood that it already has to use both doors. When door number two is blocked by empegliflozin, there are not enough doors for glucose to go through, and the excess glucose is excreted in the urine. This helps to lower blood sugar in people with diabetes, but it won't cause low blood sugar, because door number four allows enough glucose through to keep the blood sugar at a normal level. The other point to consider is that empegliflozin hasn't been approved for use in children, and a lot of people with GSD1B are children. This is because empegliflozin has not been studied extensively in children because type 2 diabetes primarily affects adults. However, in addition to the recent clinical trial with GSD1B patients, three out of four of whom were children, there has been at least one other trial of empegliflozin in individuals under the age of 18. It was tested in 27 adolescents with type 2 diabetes, and as with the GSD1B trial, no serious side effects or adverse events were observed. It's also common for medications to be used off-label in children without specific approval. So what's the takeaway? Empegliflozin is an exciting new treatment for GSD1B that is a significant improvement upon the use of GCSF. It improves neutrophil function by preventing 1,5-AG6P from clogging up neutrophils, therefore correcting the underlying problem. It's more affordable than GCSF, and it can be taken orally. It may also allow GSD1B patients to reduce their GCSF dose or stop using it altogether. As one 27-year-old man with GSD1B said, this is the biggest breakthrough for GSD1B in my lifetime. If you or someone you love has GSD1B, talk to your doctor about empagliflozin.